please join me in welcoming Denzel Washington. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I am obviously the most unorganized. Everybody else has nice boxes to bring their script up in. And I just like kind of got it all messed up here and put it inside of a magazine. So, so uh, in fact, I don't even have it in the right order. Wait a minute, let me get it in the right order here. So if it starts like flying around the stage, just, you know, run around and grab it for me and bring it back up here for me. I'll keep going as I can. Uh, President Gutman, Provost Price, Board Chair Cohen, fellow honorees, beautiful honorees, and today's graduates. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm honored and grateful for the invitation today. I'm, it's always been great to be on the Penn campus. Uh, I've been here before a lot of times for uh, basketball games. My son played at the Palestra, played on the basketball team. I, yeah, that's right, played on the basketball team. <laughs> Coach didn't give him enough playing time. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> no, but I'm really, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really pleased with the progress that Coach Allen has made. And, uh, no, I do. I am. I really am. And uh, I hope I'm the best success in the future. And, and, you know, I always get a warm welcome when I come to Pennsylvania, when I come to Philadelphia, uh, except on the few occasions where I wear my Yankee cap. That, I mean, what's, what's, what's wrong with that? I, I can't suddenly just switch up and wear a Philly cap. I mean, I mean, it's like taking your life in your hands around here when you wear a Yankee cap. I'm telling you. I met a couple of guys and they were like, hey, we love you, Denzel, but you know, you're walking around with that hat on. We don't care who you are. So you'll be happy to see that I'm not wearing my Yankee cap today. I'm wearing my Yankee socks, my Yankee t-shirt, my Yankee jock shorts. My Yankee underwear, my Yankee toe warmers, but <laughs> not my Yankee cap. But still, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm, I'm not used to speaking at a graduation of this magnitude. It's, it's a little overwhelming. It's out of my comfort zone. Are you dress me up in army fatigues or throw me on top of a moving train, as someone said, unstoppable, or Ask me to play Malcolm X, Ruben Hurricane Carter, or Alonzo from Training Day. I can do that. But a commencement speech, it's, it's a very serious affair, and it's a very different ball game. There are literally thousands and thousands of people here. And for those who say, well, you're a movie star, millions of people watch you and watch you speak all the time. Well, that's true. That, that's technically true. But I'm not actually in the theater watching them, watching me. I think that makes sense. I mean, I'm not there when they call for a fidget around or pull out their iPhones or text their boyfriend or uh, scratch their behinds or whatever it is they're doing in the movie theater. But from up here, I can see every single one of you. And that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> so please, don't pull out your iPhones and you text, don't text your boyfriend until after I'm done, please. Yeah, if you have to scratch your behind, I mean, I understand, go ahead. <laughs> I was thinking about this speech, what I should say. I figured the best way to keep your attention would be to talk about something, you know, really like juicy Hollywood stuff. Like, uh, I thought I could talk about uh, uh, me and Russell Crowe getting in arguments on the set of American Gangster or, uh, but I said, no, 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 you're a group of high-minded intellectuals. You're not interested in that. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> I thought about uh, a private moment I had uh, backstage with Angelina Jolie in a dressing room uh, after the Oscars. But I said, no, I don't think so. This is an Ivy League school. And I mean, Angelina Jolie half-naked in a dressing room. Who, who wants to hear about that? No one, no one, no one, 
No one. This is pen. That stuff would never go over well over here. Maybe at Drexel, but not over here. <laughs> Woo, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> so I was back to square one, feeling the pressure. So now you're probably thinking, if it was going to be this difficult, this much pressure, why did I even accept today's invitation in the first place? Well, you know, my son goes here, that's number one. That's a good reason. And I always like to check to see how my money's being spent. <laughs> and I'm sure there's some parents out there who can relate to what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm. To everybody upstairs. And there were some other good reasons for me to show up. Sure, I got an Academy Award, but I never had something called a magic meatball after waiting in line for half an hour at the food truck. Yeah. Yes, I talked face to face with President Obama, but I never talked face to face with a guy named Queter, who sings bad songs over at Smokes on Tuesday night. I never been to Buies. I never been to Hemos. Yes. I have played a detective who battles demons, but I've never been to a school in my life where the squirrel population has gone bananas. I mean, they're breaking in the dorm rooms, they're walking around campus. I think I saw some carrying books on their way to class. So I had to be here. I had to come. Even though I was afraid I might make a fool of myself. In fact, if you really want to know the truth, I had to come exactly because I had to come exactly because I might make a fool of myself. Now, what am I talking about? Here it is. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Now, I'm sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything except my faith. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks, and I'm sure you've probably heard that before, but I want to talk to you about why that's so important. I got three reasons, and then you can pick up your iPhones. First, you will fail at some point in your life. Accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. There's no doubt about it. And I know that's probably not a traditional message for a graduation ceremony, but hey, I'm telling you, embrace it because it's inevitable. And I should know. In the acting business, you fail all the time. Early on in my career, I auditioned for a part in a Broadway musical. Perfect role for me, I thought, except for the fact that I can't sing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in the wings, I'm about to go on stage, but the guy in front of me, he's singing like, like, like Pavarotti. He's just, and he's just going on and on and on. And I'm just shrinking, I'm getting smaller and smaller. So they say, oh, thank you very much, thank you very much, and uh, you'll, we'll, we'll, you'll be hearing from us. So I come out with my little sheet music, and it, it was, it was uh, 
just my imagination by the temptations. That's what I came up with. So I hand it to the, 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 the accompanist and uh, she looks at it and looks at me and looks out at the director and was like, nice. So I, I start, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to sing. I'm like, it's just my imagination. Once again, and then coming away with me. And I'm not saying anything, so I'm thinking I'm getting better. So I, I could start getting into it. It was just my imagination. Running. This is all of you. Uh, thank, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Washington. Thank you.